For our countryside board project, I picked out some really nice traditional looking cardboard. Uh, the problem is it's not cheap. So the editors challenged me to come up with a way to take something from a home center, take some cheap hinges, for example, and make something that would look like a traditional, somewhat rustic uh, piece of hardware with a little bit of work. And this is what I came up with. What we're making is a butterfly hinge. And uh, you can get uh, this style hinge at almost any hardware store, big box store, uh, just for a few dollars, two or three dollars. Uh, and what we're going to end up making is this. So this is kind of my prototype to show what you can actually do. This is sold as a brass hinge, but the uh, hinge itself is made out of steel. It just has a coating on it to make it look like brass. And with a little bit of grinding and pounding, you can reshape this uh, to make it uh, into whatever you want, really. Uh, this is one that I'm in the process of working on. Uh, the first thing you do is grind off the points. So you grind off this big point here and a little bit on the, the sides to end up with a, a shape like that. You can do it with a, I did it with a bench grinder, but if you don't have that, you can certainly just file it off too. It just takes a little longer, or even saw it off with a hacksaw. And uh, then, after you get that shape, the hammering begins. On this one, you can see a size difference. I was able to stretch metal out a little bit more uh, once I got playing around with it. So what I'm trying to do initially is I'm trying to straighten out these sides. On the original, it kind of comes out as a curve. So I'm going to try to move metal into that void to end up with a, a nice straight line there. And uh, you, you can do the edge two ways. This one has a little more of a curve than this one. You could pound it out so it's just straight up and down, or you can do a curve like we had here. Uh, also, you notice that uh, these screw, uh, these countersinks for screws are a little larger on this one than this one. It's you, When you get done pounding, these holes are going to be messed up a little bit, so you have to re-countersink it, and uh, in this case I'm, I decided to use a, a little bigger screw, so uh, we're going with a deeper countersink. Uh, the tools needed to do this are, you need a hammer and something hard to pound on, so I have a, a ball peen hammer, not very big, uh, just a, a little one with a a nice ball on it. One thing you want to check out, maybe, if you are playing around with this, are uh, different hammers you might have lying around or borrowed or stolen. This one looks like a lot bigger ball, but it actually comes to a much sharper point than this one. So if I pound it with this, it looks like there are little craters all over the, the hinge. This one has a, a little less of a, a sharp point, so I get a, a little wider divot, which looks better to my eye. So you might have to play around with that a little bit. Another thing you'll need, because your hammer can't get right next to that barrel as you're pounding, is you'll have to make a punch or um, something to get into that area. So what I've taken here is a center punch, and I've ground the point off, and then shaped it round to approximate the radius of, of this ball. And that'll actually let me chase right in along the barrel. So I'll pound in here, work out a little bit until I'm to a point where I can actually hit it with my hammer. And uh, that allows me to, to keep it from damaging that. If you hit it, it's not the end of the world. This one is actually a pretty good hinge. You can see on this hinge it's a little bit wonky. Um, you know, they're, they're not very expensive hinges, so uh, you might have to do a little bit of straightening once you're done anyway. Um, and the last uh, thing I'll, I'll say is something hard to pound on. Uh, I'm just using the little anvil on the, the back of my uh, bench vise or machinist vise. Uh, you can kind of maybe see in the light it's been pounded on more than a few times. I, I just want something flat that when I pound on the, the hammer rebounds and um, if I put this on a piece of wood you certainly wouldn't get the decorative effect and you couldn't stretch the metal as well as if you have something hard. So to begin this what I'll actually do is just set the hinge right on my anvil and uh, work right along that barrel.
So starting out, I'm not going to hit it very hard. I just kind of want to see what this does. See what the dents look like, see how close I can get. The other danger is, right along here, just starting out, you can actually get it too straight, if that makes sense. So, I actually want to walk this around a little bit so the marks or dents look a little bit random. So there we have that started. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving material along this curve. I want to leave the center of the hinge alone. I, the more metal I leave there, the stronger it's going to be. So I, I really don't do a lot of pounding here except for decoration. It's along the edges where I'm going to thin this out, move some metal, and try to get that a little bit straighter. So what I'll do is just take the ball peen side of my hammer start pounding. And you can see on that, I'm starting to get that curve to go away. Uh, as you pound up in this corner, what we're going to try to do up here is we're going to try to get this metal to um, go into the corner. You can see on the original the metal doesn't go forward, it goes off to the side, so that's why that point was ground off. When I get there, I'm going to try to get that to go towards this edge, not so much to the side. Um, I'll work on this and then we'll see about working into that corner. After you pound a little bit, it might deform on you. Turn it over and give it a good wrap to straighten it out. Now I'm starting to transition up to this corner to get metal to basically move this way and this way. Don't worry if it you know doesn't look as clean as this when you're pounding. This has been cleaned up with a file. So again, right now we're just moving metal around trying to get it to get the general shape that we want. Uh, you can see these are um, the holes for the screws are starting to get a little mangled. That's okay. We're when we get done, we're going to go back through with the countersink and straighten that out. But this is the kind of the general start to it. You work around the border trying to get that shape. And then again, everything in the middle is pretty much decorative once you get done. So I want to kind of keep this as my structure and then my outside edges as decoration. Alright, let's move to the middle and start just peening it for decoration. The, the hard part is always the transition from the random hammering marks here and where you've punched it. So I'm just feathering this out. All right. Uh, now I'm going to start uh, just filing for shape a little bit. kind of map out what I want to do here. I'm just going to lock this in place and uh, with my file I'm going to draw a file. Again what I'm doing is I'm uh, getting this as straight as possible because it, it was curved and we're trying to get rid of that but I'm also trying to uh, get a, a nice overall shape to the hinge as well. Uh, 
if you want to go back through after you've filed this and just really gently go along the edge, that will create just a few little spots where you, you don't have that perfectly straight edge anymore, so it'll restore that kind of that hand hammered look. Um, now is cleaning up this edge. So what we've done is we've taken this shape and we've actually moved metal out into, to basically fill the voids and uh, get the shape that we want. So that's what's going on. Again, you're, you're pounding in this area to bring this out, same over here, and then in the corners you're trying to work this metal up and this metal over just a little bit to get that butterfly hinge shape. Now you can see on this one, this is a little smaller than this guy. Uh, I have this ready just to, to show for video purposes. When you're doing this, before you start countersinking, pound the entire hinge out and you're trying to get these to match up really, really well. Not only in shape, but also in uh, what you've done for hammer marks. Uh, when it comes time to fix the, the screw holes that you've messed up, um, I do it with a, a countersink. And you'll have to excuse me, the only countersink I have in the shop right now goes on my brace. So uh, it's a little bit old school. But um, this is a multi-spur countersink. You can go to any hardware store or even a big box store and get uh, countersinks meant for uh, modern drills. Uh, the, it seems counterintuitive, but actually a single flute countersink will cut cleaner than a multiple flute, especially at higher speeds. So if you're going to do this on an electric drill or, or a cordless drill, um, I, I'd suggest looking for the single flute. They're cheaper anyway, and um, they'll give you a little cleaner hole. Uh, but for this, I first have to figure out how in the world I'm going to hold this still. Now, I could drop a screw in over here, but I don't really want to stress the, the hinge barrel too much. So what I'll actually do is drop a screw right through one of these holes, even though they're banged up a little bit. And this will actually hold the hinge still while I countersink that out. One of the benefits to doing it by hand is besides you're not you're not really going really fast is you can really hold this still and you can also count the revolutions. So uh, at the first time through I uh, counted 20 revolutions so now I'm going to add another 6 and that way I can kind of work up to my finished depth. That looks about right. Now what I'll do is just pop this screw into one of the holes that have been done already. Now, one more item of cleanup. If you can see on the back where the countersink um, got on a, the very thin edge, instead of cutting it cleanly, it kind of pushes the, uh, the metal out so it actually sticks out a little bit. Uh, and I'm just going to file that off to clean that out. You could pound it back in, but then you don't have quite as clean a hole. And to do that, I have a chainsaw file. 
this is one that's broken off that I've put on a handle that I, I found handy for this kind of work. Any kind of round file will work that you can get in and just file off that wire edge. Alright, and the last thing I want to do is again just go through, get everything nice and straight. What I'm doing here is um, just bending the tips down a little bit so that when this goes on the cabinet or whatever you're using it for, uh, the sharp tips don't stand up and catch you as you walk by or try to use it. Every time you flip this over and flatten it, it loses a little bit of the, uh, the texture that you pounded into it because basically you're pounding it in onto a flat plate. This, in theory, should be harder than what you're pounding on. So I'm just going back through and adding a little bit of texture. Not pounding too hard because that will uh, move the hinge again and then I'll have to flip it over and do this again. When you get done, if you have any warpage, you can also finish it off on a wood block. Because the wood block won't, won't do anything to your surface. I have a corner that's just a little high. All right. Now for finish, uh, this one has kind of an antique bronze look to it and all it is is uh, spray paint. This is a metallic finish and I'll show you that quick. You just spray it on and And that's all I'm doing for the finish. Now if you look at this closely, um, some of the finish has been removed on, on the high spots. So, well, I forget what they tell you. Is this dries to the touch in one hour. So if you want this kind of surface, start touching it before an hour. Uh, just wait about a half an hour to where it's it's a little bit tacky and just with uh, your fingers you can wipe off some of the paint on those high surfaces and get a little bit more of a, a patina look to it so basically all you're doing is you're you're rubbing the uh, the paint off the high spots to to kind of give it that that look if you like the the uniform painted look that's fine too uh, but that's how to go from that to uh, what looks like a blacksmith-made butterfly hinge.